Good morning. First off, in case you didn't know, purple is my favorite color. It was my grandmother's favorite color too. The girl who is telling the story in the book, Be Kind, asks a very hard question. What does it mean to be kind? I mean, really, what does it mean to be kind? This is what I've been thinking. When Tanisha smells her, spills her grape juice on her new dress, everybody in the class laughs. Everyone except for our storyteller. As she watches all the other kids laugh, she remembers what her mom has told her many times. Always try to be kind. So that's what she did. She tried. She didn't laugh. But then it didn't seem to her like it helped much. Maybe all that other laughing, it drowned out her silence. So our girl shouts loud, purple is my favorite color. That didn't seem to help either. Tanisha ran away, and when she came back, she hid both her eyes and that big purple stain. Our storyteller tries to think, what else could she have done? How could she have tried to make it better? She thinks of all those actions she maybe could have done, and while she tries to figure it out, if anything would have helped, would have made it better? She paints. She paints a blobby purple picture. And as she paints, she asks herself, just what does it mean to be kind? It should be easy, right? I mean, being kind should be easy. An act of kindness can help. An act of kindness can change a person's life. It really doesn't have to be some huge, grand gesture. It can be a small thing maybe just a word or two. I'm gonna tell you about a man I only met once. I can't remember what he looked like or his name. All I remember are his words. On the night of July 4th, 2001, I was on the eighth floor of Johns Hopkins Hospital. I was in a pre-surgery prep room because five hours early, earlier, as I was hooked up to a dialysis machine, right in that medical building next door, I got a call telling me they had a kidney for me. The transplant team said they would be ready for me about 8 p.m. and to come on up. My thoughts and emotion during those five hours are a blur, fear. This huge sense of guilt and unworthiness. Who was I to get this gift? Knowing that for this to be happening, someone a person that someone loved had died. My emotions were like huge, overwhelming. They were suffocating. 10 years later, and I still can't coherently express them or speak of them. Mike, my husband, says the tears streamed down my face that whole five hours. What I do remember though, in that room, is sitting on the edge of the hospital bed, sitting there for a young intern so he could place an arterial monitor in my right wrist. That's all he was there for. That was his job. As I held out my arm to him, I remember I glanced up at the windows. The view I saw was looking out over the harbor it was dark and it was the 4th of July. There were fireworks everywhere. Silent, we were up high and the windows were sealed, but everywhere. I do remember feeling my tears then, as silent as the light show outside. The intent put the monitor in, he did his job. Then he looked at me, not my arm anymore, me. Carolyn, he said, you see all that, all those lights, all that beauty? Everybody else may think it's for the fourth, but it's not, it's for you. Don't be scared, it's okay, this kidney, it's for you. You don't have to cry anymore. He gathered up his stuff and he walked out of the room. I stopped crying, it was okay. 
Our storyteller thinks that being kind should be easy, but she also realized sometimes it can be hard. She realizes she probably can't fix Tanisha's purple stain, but she painted that picture. She added in some green. She made those purple blobs into beautiful purple flowers. She did that. She gave it to Tanisha and Tanisha hung it up on her wall. Just a little thing though, right? But see, all those little things add up. You open the door for someone and they walk into that room with a smile, or at least maybe not as much of a frown. You can help carry the grocery bags of the lady who was behind you in line, or at least you can smile and wish her a good day. You can give the person on the corner a dollar and not judge what they will do with it. You ask a person how they want to be called. You smile and you call them just that. You say kind words to a lady who is crying and scared and maybe, maybe you help to make it okay. You paint a beautiful picture for someone, but you try. You don't judge, you try. Isn't that what being kind is? Maybe your kindness will rub off on someone else and they will be kind as well. This is the hope. I would like to point something out. Our girl who was telling the story, we never know her name. You learn the names of all the other people, everyone she spoke to and greeted, everyone she complimented and listened to and made welcome and helped, but not her name. I'm pretty sure I know why. The book, it really isn't about her. It is about what she does, her actions, her kindness. And with her actions, she answers her question. She finds out what it means to be kind. And in doing so, we realize that it's not about her or us at all. It's what we can freely do. We can be kind. I would like to share one more thing with you. When I started, I told you my favorite color was purple. Big reason for the hair. I also, sorry, I also told you it was my grandmother's favorite color. My grandmother was a professional pastry chef. She used to let me play with her leftover pie crust dough when I was a little kid. I always used to make these little cinnamon sugar pie looking things and somehow they never got baked and I never got to eat. Thank goodness. I was the first born grandchild and I admit she always treated me a little special. She was my grandma. I know that my love for feeding people now it comes from her kindness. And the encouragement that I got in that little kitchen then. It was very hard for me when she died. She had been one of the few constants in my life. It was hard. Years later, the family all got together to do some much needed repairs and improvements to her house, now our family house. My cousin went up there to help sort things out. A couple weeks later, I got a package in the mail. The return address was from my grandmother's house. I opened it. Inside was a note from my cousin and a wrapped package. She wrote, I know it is hard for you to come up here right now. I know how much you still miss her. I thought this would help. I opened up the package. It was the blanket that my grandma had always had on her bed. It was purple. I got that package the day I came home from Hopkins. It was just like a hug. And my cousin was so very kind. So the shortened version of Ephesians 4, verse 32, to be kind to one another. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.